Are you serious? Are you serious? What? The water's turning red. The water's turning red like blood. Yes, and this Antarctica's creepy, what they call, blood falls. We've reported on this before. But now scientists think they may know the origin of why this underground red river of flowing waterfall, if you will, comes pouring out of the beautiful white, pure white Antarctic snow. I mean, it's almost like a scripture in uh, Isaiah. Come, let's reason together, thus saith the Lord, though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make them as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, I'll make them as white as wool. Well, anyway, the McMurdo Dry Valleys of Antarctica are some of the most extreme desert regions on the planet. Excuse me, des deserted, I said that wrong. But new research indicates that the region may actually be full of salty, extremely cold groundwater. The water may even connect surrounding lakes into a massive network. It is probably the host extreme of microbial life. Now, despite McMurdo's apparent dryness on the surface, it's always hinted at something more. The region is home to, of course, the magnificent Blood Falls, a red ooze that shines bright against the otherwise desolate surface. And for a while, scientists believed that maybe red algae gave it its mysterious bloody ooze in its vibrant color. But even though iron oxide is responsible for the hue Analysis has shown that the feature does contain bacterial life. There is actual bacterial life in this red crimson flow, which completely blows away the original hypotheses that this is from a red algae. So here we are. Scientists knew, it says, that the ooze had to be coming from somewhere, but were surprised to find just how extensive this valley's briny waterways might be. They don't know. They're guessing. They, can't, they're, they had already assumed, they went off the assumptions that water turns blood red only from the red algae or sometimes known as red tide. But folks, that's not the case. 23 times the water has turned blood red, and in 19 of those times, it was not algae. And this is another one of those. The blood falls. I started thinking about scriptures in the Word of God. It says in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 32, verse 6, I will also water with thy blood the land wherein thou swimmest, even to the mountains and the rivers shall be full of thee. See, this is a continuous source. This doesn't ever stop flowing. It's almost like the red crimson flow that flowed out of the veins of Emmanuel on, on the Golgotha's hill. It never stops flowing. The blood will never lose its power. It flows from the highest mountain. It reaches the lowest valley. I'm, I'm trying to help us understand that whatever's going on in the spiritual world manifests as in the physical. Let me just say this. You better pray to God that this blood falls, never stops flowing. You better pray that God keeps sending apocalyptic signs because he's trying to show you that mercy is still here. Grace is still here. There's still hope. You might not like us Christians. You might not like our uh, faith in an, a God that you cannot see, but look around and you'll see the effects of this God who spoke this world into existence and made man from the dust of the ground. Breathed in his nostrils a breath of life, man became a living soul. I don't want to get preaching here, but I'm just telling you. Now there's another, uh, think about this, folks. Scientists are stunned. Now they have to, maybe there's under, what, under the Arctic 
caps. There might be red rivers that are flowing. It's bringing up a falls because of some type of bacterial life form that they now realize is in the water. Well, here's what it says in Revelation chapter 16. Uh, in verse 3 and 4, And the second angel poured out of his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. Fountains of waters flowing out of the earth up onto the Arctic snow cap, brightly glistening into the day of the noonday sun, reminding us that we're in the final days, the last days. Are you saved? Are you seriously saved? Give your life to Jesus Christ because it is coming to an end soon and very soon.